Hey, hey, hey guys, it's Old Man G here back again with another video for Red Dove Studio. It's a bit late, so I imagine most of you guys will be watching this tomorrow morning actually. So, yeah, this is the Manchester United versus Crystal Palace match preview. Um, so, I thought I'd get this out early, um, so I'm, I will be going down to Old Trafford this Saturday to watch the game, so you're probably getting the, the post match reactions a bit later. But, yeah, um, where do I start basically? So, let's actually just look at Obviously, we played on Monday. We had a 1-1 draw against Wolves, and we want to really sort of come back um, out against um, against Crystal Palace at home. It's a home game. Um, I think we can bring a lot of confidence. And if you see the formation that I that I put out um, to the left, um, that's who I think. Um, what well, that's who I want. This this is the formation I want, and this is who I want starting. Um, so. The back five picks itself. You look at De Gea, a back four, Shaw, Maguire, Lindelof, Wambasaka. There's no need for us to play a back three against Crystal Palace, to be honest. I think that's fine. With Wambasaka and Luke Shaw hopefully pushing on forward and assisting Lingard and Rashford up top. Now, the midfield is where things get interesting. I don't know about the fitness of Fred. Um, last, time I, last time for Wars, he said Fred wasn't fully fit. I'm hoping he's fit by the weekend. If Fred is fit, personally, I feel like he should play in a defensive midfielder role. I feel like we shouldn't be playing 4-2-3-1 at home. There's no reason why we should be playing two holding midfield players. Um, in particular, Pogba, I noticed against Wolves, seemed to play in the holding midfield player role. And Pogba doesn't want to play there. He wants to play further up. So one of the big things I want to see change on, on Saturday is Pogba should not be playing in this holding midfield role. That is not his... He's not Kante. That's not Pogba's position. He should be playing further up the field, um, spraying balls and, and, and supporting the front three. So I hope that Pog Fred is fit, sorry, and that Fred can slot into that DM position. Otherwise, I would prefer McTominay to be there um, than, 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 than Pogba. Because it certainly felt um, in the previous game that, you know, that um, like Pogba was playing very much a holding midfielder role. And I don't think that's... And I don't think that will help us. We need to go on the front foot against the Crystal Palace side, who, thanks to the, in part because we have Wan Bissaka, will be more defensively weak. I feel not not incompetent. It will still be a tough test. So, but I feel like you know we can get at them if again. Why should we start with Wolves? We start quick, and that's the key here thing. Really, is that like Wolves, we started quick. We need to start quick against them as well. Pogba and Tomlin, like I said, for for feel with Pogba, I think playing slightly slightly further forward, in my opinion to help the front three. Um, and then Marcus Rashford on the left. Now, Jesse Lingard on the right. Um, I only put that because I think that I feel that like Daniel James, yes, I think that Daniel James should come in squad. And I don't think he had as bad as a game as people made it out on, on Monday. But I think because he's still young, because he's still coming into the team, because he's still embedded into the team, I feel like he'd do much better as an impact substitution, especially towards the end of the game. You know, he's young, he's got fast legs, Bring Daniel James on on the 70th minute, you know, just to basically sort of give the Crystal Palace fans something else to worry about. I think that's probably better to do um, than sort of starting him on uh, starting him first and then bringing sort of uh, Lingard, uh, Lingard on or any, anything like that. That's what I think anyway. Um, and then uh, Martial basically up top. I don't think that should change. Martial should be our number nine. He's, he's, he's probably our best finisher, I would argue. Um, and um, and this is, and that's basically how I think that we should line up against Crystal Palace. I think that, like I said, the most important thing that we need to do is start start fast, quickly. If we press Crystal Palace, if we press them like we did um, against Wolves in the first half, and take our chances when we have when we have possession, because Crystal Palace are not really a possession based side. Um, they do defend well, but again, like I said, I feel that with Wan Bissak not being there, I feel like um, we can really go at their defence, especially with the pace, the pace that we have. You know, so we need to take advantage of that. So fingers crossed, we can go with like maybe a two go, go nil lead, certainly going into half time. Um, once you've done that, you know, and we've got good control of the game, which I expect that we should have at home, so we can make Old Trafford fortress again. Um, what I would like um, is for Solskjaer to make substitutions early, because one thing I noticed about Wolves is that we made you know 70th minute. You know, like I mean, I can understand he probably didn't want to change things that much. But it, I could clearly see that the Manchester United that they looked tired. They looked tired, you know. So that some of the passes were frustrated passes, some of the balls were frustrated balls. So, you know, if we're going to make subs, we need to make them early. Our bench isn't great, 
But I'm hoping, fingers crossed, that, you know, at the very least for impact subs, you can bring on maybe Daniel James, you can bring on a Greenwood, and you can bring them on early um, to actually make a significant difference for Manchester United. Um, so, yeah, I think Crystal Palace, obviously, um, Zaha, Benteke, if, he, if he's playing, um, Townsend, even Milinkovic and the like, um, will cause Manchester United problems, you know, especially Wilfred Zaha, um, if, if we're not careful. So it's very important that um, like sort of Rashford, um, you know, help. And also just the fact that, like, Crystal Palace is a midfield, like as I mentioned, Milinkovic and Townsend and what have you, um, are not that bad. Um, and right now, in our last two games, it's, it's clear that we don't really have a, a working midfield. You know, Palace are not going to play. I don't think Palace will be as defensive as Wolves were, or even Burnley were against Arsenal. Um, I think they will give us a bit more space because they are a counter-attacking side. Uh, well, that doesn't necessarily mean they give us space, but I just think that we'll have a bit more space to play with against Crystal, pa against Crystal Palace. And I think if we get the first goal... Um, then we should be able to kill the get to kill the game off, um, secure three points and get to seventh. And fingers crossed, um, Liverpool beat Arsenal. Will be ahead of a bit of Arsenal, and we'll be getting will be will be progressing. You know, so yeah, that's just a brief summary of a match preview. Um, I won't be doing a watch along for um, this game because I'll be down at Old Trafford, so I'll be doing my sort of live post match reaction as, as as I head back. But yeah, guys, um, if you if you like what you hear, please like, share, and subscribe to Red Devil Studio. Follow us on We United X. What do you think, guys? I think as far as the score prediction goes, I'm going to go for a 3-0 to Manchester United with Martial with a brace um, with, and then Ra a Rash with a goal. That's 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 what I think is uh, that's what I think is going to happen. So 3-0 to Manchester United. Come on, United! Thanks for watching, guys. Like I said, please like, share, and subscribe to. Um, Red, uh, Red Devil Studio. Follow us on Twitter, We United X. Join our Red Devil Studio Fantasy Premier League team for the chance to win a official Manchester United 2019-2020 shirt. It's going to be awesome. And stay tuned, guys. We are doing Red Devil Studio live podcast tomorrow at seven o'clock, where we'll be previewing all the upcoming games of the weekend, having a nice, relaxed chat. Get involved in the comments uh, and let me know what you think. Thanks for listening, guys, and cheers.